Hey everybody, Boris Hasler, BK Forks. Welcome to the cross section for October 24th to October 28th, 2016. And I think the story this week is actually the Euro rebound. Now, maybe very early, I may be sort of uh, doing the cardinal sin of trying to catch a bottom or catch a falling knife. But we're pretty convinced on a fundamental basis the Euro is, is, is clearly getting into the oversold territory. And I certainly think the 108 is going to be a pretty decent support for the Euro dollar. But if you don't want to trade the Euro dollar primarily, I like the trading the Euro on the long side from the crosses. And in fact, I did a 180 degree turn on my view on Euro pound. So last week, let me just sort of uh, look at the, look at the uh, get, get into my ideas first and then I'll, then I'll talk to you about it with the charts. Last week, I was all about selling the Euro pound and that trade worked great. I mean, that was as perfect a trade as I could have possibly um, imagined uh, it happened because uh, it was really a bet, if, uh, really bet on the fact that the pound was going to bounce, but what turned out to be the truth is that the euro kind of declined. So as Yogi Berra once said, you'd rather be lucky than be good. Whatever, the trade really worked very well. I think this time the trade actually is not going to go the other side, to the other side. I think buying at 88 all the way back up towards the 90 uh, makes it a very compelling point at this point for the reason that cable I think is just not been not going to be able to to bounce back up now this whole recommendation goes completely off the table if we get some positive news out of UK if there is some sort of a compromise movement uh, which is very unlikely but if there is some sort of compromise movement between UK politicians and the European politicians yes then my, my story changes I don't want to be selling pounds against the euros um, I, I probably want to just step aside on that particular trade. But if there's nothing new going on, um, I think the chance here for the euro to bounce and for cable, more importantly, for cable to begin to crumble is quite strong. So there's a, there's a double whammy here that could make euro pound to the upside a really interesting trade. Similarly, the euro recovery trade on the euro yen I think is kind of interesting. Here, you're basically betting on two things, that I think euro doesn't go down much further and that yen um, continues to kind of slowly inch its way back up, especially if you get good U.S. data. If U.S. data um, sort of confirms two and a half percent GDP that confirms um, yen uh, that confirms the Fed tightening and provides I think a little bit of support here for the euro yen euro euro yen technically is very close to support at 112 so the risk is re relatively minimal I like trading it you know from the upside on, on that point as well so it's a euro turn story that I'm basically trying to present here that I think could, could happen this week last but not least the weakness in the CAD uh, certainly being expressed in a very low volatility but in a very clear fashion through the Kiwi Cat trade. We'll take a look at the charts here, but boy, is that a clean, nice trade to the upside. I really looked, I really like that to the upside. It's a sort of a out of the way, very quiet but very steady move here and has a potential uh, to move all the way up to the 97 resist point. It's sort of midway through the uh, through the range at this point. Let's take a look at the charts and just see what I'm talking about as far as everything uh, on the cross side. So here's Euro Pound, right? Last week we loved the idea that you know to sell it and it just you know came crumbling down uh, more than a, than 100 points. I think it was you know what was the high last week? I think it was uh, it was 90.50 and it came all the way down to 89. What was the low? 88.79. Yeah, it just uh, came in more than 100 points to the downside. So now I think it's time to kind of change course and make the assumption that 88 is going to hold and that between this 88.90 and 88 is going to present a pretty decent opportunity to, you know, to get along the pair. Hard to uh, just kind of plow right, right into it, especially uh, on a technical basis. This seems like a very negative uh, construct technically. So probably the most intelligent thing is to kind of scale into a position with a hard stop at around 87.50. I mean, if it, if it breaks 88, um, the whole thesis for the, for the trade really goes away. But it's hard to find to, to figure out exactly what this thing is going to stop on a support basis, you just have to kind of front run support and hope um, that it turns you away at this point. Euro yen has a very clean support here at this one, uh, 1200. So again, similar kind of a thing, 1150 would be a stop and you could just kind of begin to scale down in the position. Again, on, on, on a supposition that support holds and we get some sort of a bounce here. Both of these, I understand, are um, sort of non-conventional trades. But last week, I also made a couple of non-conventional trades. I, you know, I, I, I wanted to get short Aussie Kiwi. That worked very well. I wanted to get short Euro Pound. It worked very well. I think in, a, in this kind of a range-based environment where we're at, where you don't have very clearly defined trends, looking for turns is probably the smarter play. And both of these are turn trades. Hopefully, 
they will work this week as, as well as the turn trades worked last week. But last but not least, if you don't want to just kind of throw your, your dice and, and bet on the fact that there's turn trades all around, a very clear and a very clean little looking chart here is this, is this Kiwi Pound. I mean, clear support 93s. Um, CAD is obviously very, very weak. The, the only sort of surprise that could happen here is oil verticalizes to, to, to 55. You always have that danger with CAD that, you know, that, that you're trading oil. Oil gets really squeezed to the upside. CAD gets very, very strong. We come back down. If we do, it actually, I think, presents a pretty decent opportunity for, for, for averaging into the position. To me, Kiwi Cat is a buy all the way until 92.50. Unless, you know, when we break this thing with conviction, then it's a sell. But overall, I like the relative strength of Kiwi Cat. I, any kind of pullback I want to be buying here. And if you just want to kind of chase the trade for further continuation, certainly have a chance here for 97 as an extension. So as a trend trade, this is the cleanest and clearest trend trade I think we have in the, uh, uh, in the crosses and the commodity complex. And that's pretty much how the week shapes up. It's basically a bet on a euro turn. Um, if it does happen, it should really work well for us. And if it doesn't, at least we have one trend trade that we can trade in a quiet and in an uneventful manner. Wish you guys the best of luck, the best of trading. Boris Nosberg, over and out.